Welcome back, MAJ Customs fam. If you are new here, I'm Amanda. If not, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, guys. Okay, so I did a video about a week ago on the Easter uh, vending machines, right? And I did explain all the materials that you would need to build your Easter vending machine. Well, I'm about to do a Mother's Day vending machine just so I can show everyone step by step how I upload my images and how I just basically use which is called uh, your page setup over here in the top right hand corner it's called page setup and then you would just change your media size to the size of the Easter vending machine or well it's not Easter anymore but the size of the vending machine that you uh, are, will be building okay so again like I said in my last video a lot of what I'm going to mention in this video is already spoken of. I'm just doing a step by step with you guys on how I bring everything together and showing you guys. I did switch up two things and I'll show you all what I switched up later on in this video to kind of make it a little a little bit easier um, for us to move a little bit faster building these machines. OK, so for your first step, you want to make sure that your media size is eight and a half by eleven. I know a lot of people say eight by ten. But this is how I went about building ours. And the only thing is when you go to cut your edge off from around your image, it'll be maybe slightly a tad bit smaller. But other than that, I still type in eight and a half by 11, as you can see over here on the right hand side. Now, next step, you want to figure out what image you want to use. I will be doing a Mother's Day vending machine. So I will be going into Pinterest, which I already have loaded right here. And these two designs right here, I will be using. So what you would wanna do when you find a design that you like, all you do is hit these three little dots right here and click download. And then you'll see that it be loading up here where this arrow is, right? And the same goes for the next image down here. Three dots, I'm just gonna click on download, okay? Now I am on my husband's computer and let me tell y'all, I can't just open up the downloads, right? And drag them right into let's see if I can do it I don't think it'll let me because I tried it so it won't let me drag my images right so that's kind of frustrating on this computer because on my computer I can just download and drag my images right on over into silhouette studios but if you can't do that that is fine all you have to do is let me bring this in some to make sure you guys can see it over here on the top left hand side you're gonna hit file and you're gonna want to hit open okay and what you download should be at the top. So I'm gonna click on these two because those are the ones I just downloaded and they should automatically upload. Now they may upload separate, which they did. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit copy and bring it on over to the same page that my other image now. So now I have them together, okay? So I also am going to need my vending machine parts, which I mentioned as well in the other video i only purchased a template for the vending machine parts but you guys can get the vending the vending machine parts off of etsy so let me see if i download right here and i'm just going to copy and then take it over to the images and paste so now i have my vending machine parts okay this is the fun part for your guys template it is not as hard as a lot of you think it is so already my page setup is eight and a half by 11. We already spoke of that. So all you wanna do is figure out what image you want for the front and what image you want for the side. So this is the one I will be using for the front. So what we're gonna do is stretch it out until we fill up our page, our media um, size, okay? And if you guys hear any noise in the background, I truly apologize. I tried to hold off on this video as long as I could, but we have construction going on right in front of our house. So there's a lot of noise. So if you guys hear anything, I truly, truly apologize, but I really wanted to get this video out to you guys. Okay, so we already filled out our page setup. All right, and as you can see my design, it says 11 in height and 8.5 in width. We're good with that. Next you wanna do is your sides, remember, our height has to match up, so you can't go wrong with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring down our side to match up next to the main design, the front design, okay? 
And that looks pretty good right there. And it doesn't matter if you're a little bit off because when we go to print these out, you still will have a chance to cut them before you actually put them on the foam board, okay? And people kind of do that a few different ways, all right? But we'll get into that later. Okay, so our next step is now that we have our main front image and then we have our side image, we want to focus on the window. So all you want to do is go over here to your left-hand side and grab you a square, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and grab, well, this is a rectangle, but we're going to make it into whatever size we would like. So a rectangle, we will pull over. We're gonna make it white. We'll just make it white. You can make it whatever color you want so it can stand out because remember, this is the part we will be cutting out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my red outline off. And now I'm just gonna stretch this window as tall and as wide as I would like it. You guys, this part is really up to you. Um, again, if you don't want the edge right here to be too skinny because you're scared you may just completely cut through it then bring your window in if you don't want it all the way to the end like this bring your window in anything that will make you comfortable when you get ready to cut this window out okay so as of right now i think that the window to me looks fine uh it is at seven in height and 5.4 we can make it 5.5 .5 to make it just an even um, number 5.5 okay and again it's all about how big and how small you want to cut your window out all right we'll leave it right there because it's going a little too over 5.5.22 okay so your next step is if you want to add individual images you are more than welcome to do so people add characters and all that stuff you find a character and it has a background remember you can always upload and remove background if it works then great. If not, just go back and look for another image and then you can just place them images wherever you like around your border. Next step, if somebody wants a name added up here, then you will give yourself, let's just type out a name. We'll just type my name out. Okay. Whoop, hold on, give me one second you guys. I'm dropping my cameras over here. Okay, let me correct this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my name on here make it i'll just make it white make it simple take off the outline maybe let's make it red and then we'll give it an offset so we'll give it a dark red then we'll change the letter size we'll make it um let's see we'll do an impact there we go then we can give ourselves an offset which is this little star over here okay it's an offset pan offset panel click on that give the name an offset to bring it out okay so there we go now we're just gonna group this this is just if you're gonna you know if the customer wants to add a name you want to add a name give yourself enough room above the window okay I have a little bit more room so I can bring this window up if you want to add the name I'm not going to add my name just in case a customer sees this and they decide that they want to buy it my name won't be on this but I'm just giving you an example. Give yourself enough room to cut your window and to cut your edge, okay? So I'm taking this off. Now the next step you want, you want to figure out where your vending machine parts are going to go. Here go my vending machine parts. So I'm going to bring those on in. And I'm sorry you guys if I'm slurring some of my words. I have a hard time pronouncing some words. So just bear with me, okay? So here go my vending machine parts. and. The way I know that this is how I'm going to want it to be. Okay, so once, excuse me, once you're confident with the square size, we can bring it up. Double check. Okay, I may come up a little bit just to be on the safe side. And that should be fine for me. Or I can bring my window up to give me room too. Okay, so I'm okay with that. Now we can just type in open. Make it look cute. Again, you guys, I'm just giving you an example to let you guys know it's not as hard as you all think it may be because I see a lot of people still have a lot of questions. And the main question is what size? All you have to do is follow your, your page size, your media size, okay? And you can go from there. Again, the window is up to you. I'm giving you and I'm showing you um, front and center the sizes I'm making everything um, for this for this particular vending machine okay so I want to change 
the font over here I may just go ahead and give it just make it into impact I'm I'm okay with this it's white and it's simple you guys can go into fancier details if you would like but for the sake of this video I'm just trying to get you all through it without taking too long okay so this is pretty much what it's looking like okay now for the window you guys can knock this out in the beginning my window was pink and it didn't dawn on me to change it to white or change it to black because when you get to cutting around your window you tend to not always get the edge clean and completely cut off so it was leaving a little bit of pink in my edge cutting and i did not like that and my window cutting around here i didn't like it so i started making my windows white and you can also send the window to the back and let's take this off real quick and i'll show you guys what i'm talking about you can send your window to the back and then you can square out your whole design and over here it's going to give you the it's like a modified panel it's got a square and a circle together you would just click on that and click on divide and this is what will happen it will knock your window out you don't have to do that but that is what i started doing and then i realized i could just leave it white but again i was still it doesn't matter because white is still going to be right here so you can go ahead and just we can go ahead and just leave it the way it was so i can go back and leave it and bring my window to the front we'll send my let's send this to the back hold on okay so my window is here and we'll just make my window white and put it back in place there we go and we'll just put it back in place so yeah you guys just keep in mind as long as it's white it still may leave a trim but it won't look as bad as if it was like a pink or green or blue or all those other crazy colors okay so here we go now that we're all done we can bring our parts back in and i can go ahead and group this because it was not grouped okay so now that we have our front completed this is it for the front like i said if you guys want to add some images on here to make it look more fancier you are more than welcome to do so but as of right now i'm going to leave it simple now moving forward let's work on our sides here goes what i'm using for the side i always try to make my colors for the front design and the sides kind of blend okay kind of make it match as good as you can so i have mine already in place the height is 11.0 which i'm fine with that like i said once we print these out we'll be able to cut the edges if we need to to make them the same height now for the width these these are the sides so remember they're going to be four if you want to make them wider you're more than welcome to do so but four has four inches wide has been working for us so that's what i'm going to stick to okay so i'm at 4.0 now i'm just going to duplicate this i hope you guys are getting it i hope you guys are bearing with me i'm trying to make these steps as simple as possible for you guys okay it's really not that hard once you get the hang of it i know in the beginning it sounds so confusing but trust and believe it's really not all right so this is what it's gonna look like and we're not gonna worry about the back because the back is just gonna be plain foam board so you don't unless you want an image for the back you're more than welcome to print one out for that but again i leave mine white and then we just go ahead and decorate it up at the end we put like either some grass you can use either tissue um what is it that like gift tissue paper that you were to stuff in gift bags and all that stuff you can use that and glue it down to your shelves you can use the card stock you can use what is it, adhesive vinyl you, there's so many options you can use to decorate your vending machines that all you have to do is just take a minute think about it and like oh okay i can use that you can use glitter cardstock and just glue the backing down to your shelf or you can use like i said you can print your image out and use sticker paper there's so many different ways you can decorate your back as well as your shelves but again for this video i'm going to keep it as simple as possible for you all okay all right you guys so now we have our sides and our front completed now we're going to go ahead and get ready to print so i'm going to go ahead and print these out and i'm going to give you i believe the uh eco tank 3850 that is the machine i will be printing these out on and then i will be back to show you guys the image and what i will be doing is these two sides will be printed together 
and then my front will be printed alone okay so i'm gonna go ahead and hit print for this one and then i will be back to show you all the image and how it turns out okay okay everyone so this is the eco tank 3850 this is what it looks like okay now this was the printer i was using before um but this is ink cartridge okay so the hp envy pro is ink cartridge and then you have the eco tank 3850 way more ink and it'll last longer okay so here goes the image you guys this is what it looks like. And again, remember I told you, you don't have to knock your window out. Just change it to white. Whatever color will blend with your image. White or black, don't matter. Okay, whatever color your image is, I would make that the color of your square. I should have made mine pink, but then I wouldn't be able to see it. So white is fine. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to see it if it was the same color as this, as the image. So white is fine, it, it should blend. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and print out our next image. Okay, you guys, I just want to show you what I noticed is my black is not really black. What And I know what I did wrong. I did not go into my settings. And for some reason, my settings and my printer always jumps back to the regular settings. But you always have to go in there and make sure you hit the ICM in your color settings. And it'll bring your colors back. So I'm going to remember that when I print out the next image. This is just a practice one, a rough draft one. So I'm not even going to worry about it. But in case you guys notice, hey... The vending machine parts are not as dark. Um, it's because it's the ICM. I already know what it is, okay? So moving forward, let's print out our next design, okay? So this is the next design. We already have it ready to print to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and print that out and change my printer settings as well. All right, and then I'll show y'all the images when they come out. Okay, you guys, so the sides are getting printed. And I did change my settings, okay, so they look a lot better. And I did want to show you guys, so this was the front, and you see how it's faded black. I did go in and correct that, um, and I did add your special day on top as well, as you guys can see. So I did correct it. This is what it looks like, a lot brighter, a lot prettier, so make sure you pay attention to your settings when it's time for you guys to print, okay? Go in and change it to ICM in your, in your, I think it's, what is it? More option settings, all right? Okay, you guys, let's move on to the next step. Now it's time to glue, well, no, actually it's time to um, do the um, clear laminate over it, but we, we've we changed that. So let's go, let's move on to the next step, you guys. Okay, everyone, so here we are with all the tools um, that we are going to need. I do have the hot glue gun and the sticks, um, but the young lady in the comment section in the other video mentioned the rubber cement, the rubber, it was liquid, liquid rubber glue, but this is what I could find at Walmart. So yeah, thank you to at, I believe it's at the Julius 08. Um, I hope I'm saying that right, Julius, Jules. Anywho, thank you so much. I am going to try that out in this video um, and see how quick it dries along with our, here go our photos that we printed. I am going to use the crystal clear bags today. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up because again, this is, this is just a rough draft for me. So you guys, I mentioned to do the self-adhesive laminate over the photo paper um but we actually are gonna do something different today we went out and purchased the scotch laminator okay thermal laminator so you're gonna need the thermal pouches with this and these are the thermal pouches okay right here so this is what i'm going to use for the images and you guys we've already tried this and it works really awesome and it saves you from worrying about any bubbles or any of that good stuff right so if you're interested in this this they carry at walmart but it will not be in the aisle where your office supplies would be it would be over there where like you have your office supplies and then you have the section of where the glue sticks the glue guns I'm trying to think exactly what was all in that aisle. It was, I think it was kind of like 
um, scrapbooks and all that stuff. This is over somewhere in the crafting aisle and it's way cheaper than the, I mean, it's still scotch, but the other one was red and black. It was like a red box over in the um, office supply area. And that one was $30. And I compared the two, you guys, and it's almost the same thing. And we only paid 17 for this one. So I'm gonna show you guys how this works as of right now, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, set it up, and I'm gonna turn it on, let it warm up, and then I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to use this, okay? Okay, you guys, so on the machine, it has your power, and it has three mil and five mil. The thermal pouches we will be using says three mil on there. So we're gonna go ahead and just let it warm up at three mil. And now for the back part, you have to be careful when opening the back, okay, you just wanna open, and then you just lift up like that, and then you slide in your pouches. And when it's time to close it, you just wanna close. It should just, you gotta bring it in, hold on. It's kinda tricky, because <laughs> it should just go down. Let me put it down. Because you're supposed to just close it, and then it's supposed to automatically just, there we go. Okay, so it goes up when you need to use it, and then you close and go down. Hold on, I just did it, goes down just like so, okay? So up when you need to use it, and then go down like so, when you wanna close it and you're done with it, okay? So right now we're gonna leave it up because this is the part I'm waiting to show you guys. So you'll know when it's ready because it has the ready button right here so it'll turn green, and then we can go ahead and slide our images right on through. Let me move this other stuff to the side. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull out two pouches cause that's what we're gonna use for our images, okay? So yeah, you guys, this is way easier than having to worry about using the squeegees and the sticker papers and all that stuff. Not saying that you shouldn't because whatever you're comfortable with, you should go ahead and um, feel free to use, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so while that is warming up, this part right here has like a little edge to it. This is the part that you will not open. We're gonna go with the part that you kinda can see. You gotta play with it to get it to open. Just don't do the one with the edge, okay? Here we go, see, so you're gonna open it just like so. And then we are gonna place our image right on inside. Make sure you get it as even as possible from like top to bottom. And then you also want to be careful when you slide it in the machine because it can potentially go in crooked. Okay, so we're going to have it just like this. All right. And now we're just waiting for the button to turn green right here. And then we'll slide it on in, okay? We'll turn it around so you guys can see. All right. And again, you guys see the big difference. So I did, like I said, showed you guys already that it was my fault I did not check my um, ink settings when I went to print. Okay, so we're not using this one, but we'll do this one, okay? So same thing, you don't want the one with a little edge on it, you want the side that is pretty much even, and you just open it. And for the pouches, you guys, I think I paid like $10 for a pack of 15 pouches. I believe the price was $10, way cheaper than it would be if you were to purchase it from the office department, okay? Go ahead and put it in there like so. Um, yeah, 15 pouches, you guys, for these ones. And again, it's the same, it's the same thing as the one they have over in the office um, supply uh, department in Walmart, okay? All right, just waiting for this to turn ready and then we can go ahead and load the images in. And this is one of just maybe one of the, I don't know, slight hardest parts. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and let the machine warm up and then I'll be back and show you guys how this works. Okay, you guys, I apologize. The indicator light for ready is gonna be blue, not green. Okay, so here we go. We have our image already in there. And again, be careful when sliding in because if you go crooked, it's gonna come out crooked. All right, here we go. 
All right, and it's going in slow. Look at that. And I don't have to worry about doing any squeegeeing, any, anything. And it's almost done. And it should go ahead and push it on out as soon as it's finished. Move this out the way. Okay, and it's all done. Okay, look at that. And you don't have to worry about nothing. All right, let's go for the second one. We're good to go. Just being careful because I don't want it to go in crooked. But once it takes, you should be good. And here we go. Let's move that to the side. All right, you guys, almost done. And you have a perfect cover and you don't, like I said, you don't have to worry about any bubbles or any of that. And you could just one by one, just keep sliding your images in to get you through your orders. Okay, this one is finished. And yes, we are gonna go along and cut this, okay? And if in when putting this on the foam board and we cut, and we get any lifting, then we'll just put some glue under there and just go ahead and lay it back down. All right, so now I'm gonna move this to the side and we're going on to move to our next step. Okay guys, so remember you're gonna need your tape because we gotta tape the door down. And I'm not sure if I showed you my blade, but I got a new one from Walmart. Um, and this is just the brand that it is. It came with a bigger one as well, okay? And I believe that's, oh, and don't forget your ruler because this is what we're gonna use to cut this. Now I have my foam board, but I'm not gonna glue this just yet. What I'm going to do is cut out the window, the outline on both images before I actually glue them to the foam board, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay my ruler down, get it as close to the line as I can. And my lighting in this room really sucks, you guys, so I'm trying to, be real, real careful. And now I'm just gonna go ahead. Okay, here we go. Got my blade. And remember, I put the metal part down on my image that you guys can see. All right, so then I'm just gonna cut as close. I'm gonna push down on my ruler so it don't move, as well as my blade. See it moved a little bit. All right. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go all the way around with it. I may invest in a more like little, I mean, a more expensive blade. Um, this was just the best one that I saw at Walmart. I didn't really see any like really good ones. All right. OK. 
Okay, now my window. Oh, I didn't. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe this way. I didn't go all the way down on one of the corners, y'all. Alright, so it should come out. Alright, no problems. There goes the window and I went over just a little bit, but that's okay, no problem. And I'm going to do the same for the door, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do the door off camera so I don't take up too much of your guys' time. And then I'm going to trim the edge off as well. And then I'll be back, okay? Okay, you guys, I cut my little door off. And now I'm just going to go in and cut, trim off the edges here. Pressing down on my ruler really hard. Okay. All right. Here we go again. There we go. See, I got some white left, so I'm gonna go back over this part. Hold on. All right, should be good there. And last one. A lot of people wait. I went a little over too much there, but I'll fix it when I go on the foam board. A lot of people wait to glue this down onto the foam board. You can do it that way if you like. Um, I do it both ways. It really doesn't matter. So I just, for this video, I just cut it out. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim this one and then I'll be back, okay? Okay, everyone. So apparently my, my camera wasn't recording when I glued it to the foam board, but I did apply the Elmer's rubber cement and it seems like it's doing okay um i did stop the video because i'm switching out my blades because this one it's for some reason it's not locking um so yeah and that's the one i just recently got so i'm going back to my first one and now i'm just going to continue to cut out my foam board okay sorry you guys i thought my camera was recording but it wasn't so i'm just going to cut out my foam board to my window. This one is way better. And I'm not even sure where I picked, I think I picked this one up from Hobby Lobby. This little knife here. All right. And if you have to go cut through it twice, then be more happy to do so. Whatever works for you guys. Okay. All right. Let's see. All right. Some of the corners I have to be careful with. I don't want to just tear them off, even though it's quite loose. I still would rather cut it off. Okay, so it's out. The window is out. And now I just have to cut the bottom part here, okay?
And then whatever white foam board, like I have a little bit of white right here on the corner, whatever white foam board you have, you can always go back and clean it up. Don't think you can't, cause you can't. All right, rub my knife through. So the bottom right here is gonna need some glue. My lines are in there, you guys. It's just the corners that are, there we go. And I'm gonna need this little piece because I'm going to glue the push, the little push um, design on here, okay? All right. All right, there we go. And then it's a little piece right here I have to tear off, clean up. And then take my little push design and we're just gonna glue it right onto the bottom, okay? which way it came out. And I'm gonna have to make this smaller. I'm gonna have to make this smaller so it'll swing open. Whoops. All right, place it on there. Just gonna have to let that sit and dry, okay? All right, you guys, so next is the side. We're gonna go ahead and glue the sides down and cut. These we'll do together at the same time. We'll do the first one and then we'll do the second one. So go ahead and put the glue on here. So far, I think the cement glue is pretty good. Just give it a little bit of time to dry. And make sure you have just enough on there. Okay, now we're just gonna line it up to the foam board. Bring it down, over. Perfect, 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 perfect. Okay, let that one dry and then we'll do this one. I can honestly say that the rubber cement is better. You wanna know why? Because you don't get the little hot glue strings that be coming, sticking to your fingers and stuff. So that's, that's a difference. All right, we're just gonna line this up as well. Place it on your foam board, straighten it out. Put it on there, lay it down real good. Now I'm gonna let these dry and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off camera because again, I'm trying not to take up too much of your guys' time and then we can get ready to glue this um, vending machine together, okay? Okay, you guys, so far we have the two sides, we have the front and we have the little opening down here at the bottom that says push. Next, we are going to glue the sides. I wanna glue the sides. I get my shells based on um, I gotta put some glue right here on this corner. But I build my shelves based on how wide my sides are. And I'm doing this a little different as far as what I'm putting in here. And as far as what I'm putting in the vending machine. Um, you guys, I actually like the cement, the rubber cement glue though. It doesn't give you, like when you use like the hot glue gun, you kind of feel 
the glue underneath and how it plays, it gets hard and you can feel it. But I'm going to try to place this along with this wine glass um, in this vending machine. So we'll see how this is going to turn out, okay? All right, let's get to gluing the sides. So we're going to go ahead and just put some cement glue right here. Hold on, I got some on my finger. All right. So we'll put some on here. Be careful with this because a lot comes on this brush. Okay, and then we're just gonna go down. If it doesn't stick for my sides like I want it to, then I'll just go ahead and throw the glue gun on this. No biggie. No biggie. Okay, I got some on there. And now we're just gonna line it up with the sides. And I'm sitting it on top of the backing. It's not on the side, it is on top, okay? I may, I may have to use the glue gun for this part. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hold this until it dries, you guys. And then I'll be back. I'm gonna do the other side off camera as well. Um, just so, yeah, just so I don't take up your guys' time and then you gotta sit here and watch me hold it while it dries. All right, so I'll be back when this stuff dries. Okay, you guys, so I ended up going in with the hot glue gun for the sides. Um, don't get me wrong, the Elmer's glue has been working wonders on laying the image down and them sticking really awesome. It's just, if you're in a hurry, like, I'm trying to just hurry up and piece this thing together, then um, yeah, I would recommend this for the walls. But other than that, you can use the rubber cement for the images being laid down on the foam board, okay? So I got one wall up, and now what I wanna do is the window before I attach the other wall, okay? Okay, so again, I use the clear, um, crystal clear, bags right here this is what I'm going to use on this one okay and I already cut it was already a window cut out from one of my previous orders so I'm just gonna lay it and it's a little it's a little big but I can always cut it where it's not glued at so for this one we can use the rubber cement okay and it should be fine Again, just be careful because a lot comes on this brush. I'm just gonna go along the edge where I know the window is gonna be. Or where the, the window is gonna attach to the board, rather. Okay. And with the glue gun, it does get really lumpy up in between these spaces right here. So, yeah. This cement glue will come in handy. Okay, and now I'm just gonna lay this. I want it right above the door opening. So I'm gonna go ahead and just lay this. And again, whatever access of the window I have, I can just cut it. It doesn't even matter. All right, let that stick. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay. So it's uh, hanging over the top right here. I'll just go in with my scissors before it like really sticks to the board and just cut. All right, now if I were to have used a hot glue gun, the hot glue gun would have kept the window in place and all I would have had to do was cut the excess plastic off. All right, so that looks pretty good, you guys. We should be good. I'm gonna add, it looks like it needs a little bit more glue right here. So I'll just add a little bit of hot glue. Right up in there. And then do piece of paper 
kind of smooth it out. All right, we should be good right there. Okay, now I'm gonna attach the other door with the hot glue. I mean, not the other door, I'm sorry, guys, the other wall. <laughs> I'm gonna test the other wall. All right, here we go. So now I just go up the sides. I will be putting a top on this and uh, I'll show you guys how I do that because I'm going to cover the whole top and then we'll just line this up on the edge. Okay. So. Then hold it and then I will go in on the inside with the glue as well go up right there and then just hold it a little bit till it dries and then I'm gonna go in and attach my door put it right here and then I'm just gonna take that with this um, tape that I have on hand okay so I'm just gonna take some little pieces of tape and then attach it. I'm gonna push the door all the way to the top of the cut mark. What you don't wanna do, don't tape the side of the door because you want it to be able to swing open. And I'm just gonna stay right on top. Okay. And then I'm gonna put a piece right in between the two that I just laid, right on top of the two pieces that I just laid. They're not that big of a piece, but enough to catch it, enough to catch the door. All right, just like so. So that's what we have so far. Okay, that's what we have so far. And now I'm gonna show you guys how I get my top, my bottom, and my back. So for my back, you guys, for the door, I just lay it just like this on the foam board and I trace, okay? I bring it down and I trace it. Make sure it's at the edge. It's at the edge to the bottom, edge to the side. And then I just take a pen and I trace it, which I had traced it off camera, but I wasn't on point. I can see I'm off. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace it again with my pen. Make sure I get as close as I can. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna cut that out for the back. All right. I'm gonna go this way. Go this way. and cut. Okay, and then as well as this way. Cut. All right, and this should be my door. This didn't cut all the way through. There we go. So move that out the way. And this should be good enough to cover my back. Okay. Now to do my top and bottom, I do the same thing. I just stand it up and then I trace. Okay. Which on this side, I don't have that much of a difference. Slight difference, slight difference that I can just tr trace and cut it off. All right. So that's how I do my top and bottom. This side, um, of my side is going a little bit so I'm just gonna pull it out and then go ahead and trace it uh, let's see did I give that a little lip probably not I usually live leave a little bit of lip on each side okay all right So. 
All right, now I'm gonna cut. And then the more of these you do, the more you get the hang of it. I'm telling you guys, it seemed hard at first, but after our first three, we were gone. We were running. I'm just smoothing up the sides. And then I flip it because you may still have some ink marks. And then I just place my, it'll be just like that. Okay, I'm okay with this. I am okay with this. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. Let me straighten this front up though. This front looks like it's shaved a little bit off. So I'll just clean that up. We should be good there. Hopefully it didn't take too much off where I was off. Okay. Okay, you guys, I'm going in with the top. Move that out the way. Again, just doing it with the glue gun. Like I said, with these projects, if you're doing quite a few, make sure you have a nice amount of glue sticks on hand because, well, if you're using the cement, the rubber cement, then it won't be that bad with the glue sticks because then the cement takes up a lot of what you would use if you were using the glue gun. Okay. And again, watch the window. You don't get none of that on the window when it comes to that glue gun. Okay, so now, I'm going to place this up here, bring it forward, okay, press down, press down, okay, so now that we can let this dry on top, we can go in and figure out, because again, I'm using this wine glass to put in here so i gotta figure out how i want to do this and um yeah you guys i'll be back okay i'm just gonna let this dry and then i'll see what i come up with okay guys so for my shelf like i said i just line it up and then i cut this one to go in a little snug i don't know if i want to cut but just a little bit off maybe it'll help going perfect but not too much not too much. Okay, I think we'll be good with this one. Um, now I just have to figure out how I want to do this wine bottle. This is going to be perfect. So I'm going to glue the shelf down and then I'll be back. So because my shelf is going right above the door, I am going to glue the sides and along the front of it, okay? Because you're not gonna see it. it's gonna be right up under the window. So I'm just gonna go ahead and glue this. And glue. Don't be sloppy with it, try to be careful. And then glue. And I will be securing it with more um, hot glue gun underneath. Okay, so I'm going right up under the window. Well, this one, no, I'm gonna go right above the door. That way, it'll give you a little bit more room for that wine glass. So when we sit it in, yeah. So I'm going right above the door, the opening of the door. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go along and put some glue inside. And I'll do it at the bottom as well. Turn it around, try to get it as much as possible to the sides, okay? All right, you guys, so I have this part all done for everyone. Now, I'm gonna put this wine bottle in here and then I'll be back once, I'm trying, I got a few different things I wanna do with this, so give me just a moment and then I'll be back when I finish. Okay, you guys, I figured out what I want to do. 
with the stuff I want to put in here. But real quick, I want to make sure I leave them. These hinges I ordered um, did not come with the red backing. It doesn't have the glue, but this was from the Easter um, baskets that we had ordered and we could not get any hinges to be here on time. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some hot glue on these and then place these where we feel best, where they best fit, okay? All right, so. Okay. We should be okay right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just glue this. All right. And I'm only gonna use two, I always use two. And then, whoops, careful. All right, figure out where I want them to go. And then just hold it. Okay, grab my other one, same thing, glue, and glue, okay, and then I just hold it, okay, be careful how you put these on, because the ones with the sticky, even these, if you're not careful, they will pop right off, um, so I must open this, all right, see where we're at with them. Okay, I need to glue a little bit right here. So give me just a second, I'm gonna glue that and I'm gonna hold it in place and then I'll be back to show you guys what we came up with as far as what we were putting inside, okay? Okay everyone, so before I give you the final reveal, it, 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 I can't wait to show it to you guys. I'm not quite done with it, but I'm gonna show it to you guys anyways. Just remember, um, let's do a quick recap. We swapped out the self-adhesive laminating sheets and the glossy paper we used with the, um, the pouches. So the glossy paper goes inside the pouches and you run it through the machine and you get the perfect um, coverage you don't have to worry about anything if you guys go this route uh, to me I think it was a lot nicer and the machine was like I said only $17 don't get it confused don't pick it up don't think it's the one over there in the office um, supplies aisle at Walmart that's in a red box no it's not it's in the crafting aisle but it's the same scotch brand and then the pouches you guys Okay, so that's what we swapped out along with the cement glue that you guys also as well seen. So now that we've ran through everything and we upgraded a little bit on how to make our vending machines, here goes the reveal, you guys. Now it's not completely finished, but this is what we put together so far. Okay, trying to get it all in the camera for you guys. It has a wine glass, the two little wine bottles, a little chocolate and then you have some chocolate in the back and then on top we're just gonna add some more little chocolates haven't figured out exactly what yet but look at that and then for the back and you guys can cover up anything you guys feel is um anything that you feel you don't like so the back i just put a little open with caution because it's velcro right here and i only used one shelf but of course, this will be um, dabbed with a little bit of glue and whatnot. Just a little bit, not much, because you want the customer to be able to pick it up. Okay, and then I put some little extra support down here for the weight of the wine. Okay, you guys? Again, this is what the sides look like. Okay, happy Mother's Day. And then I can turn it around without messing it up. There's the front, your special day. And like I said, we're gonna add some more to that. And some down here too as well, okay? All right. Okay, everyone, we're gonna end this video right here. And like I said, thank you for coming along. 
and watching me create this cute Mother's Day gift and give or take. You can add, take away, do whatever you guys like. And again, the um, cement glue uh, really did help a lot with the images. Guys, so, um, hey, I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys liked it. So again, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and we will see you all in the next video. Stay blessed. Bye.